Hey, welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel, where you can come every week to hear words of hope and courage and inspiration from the gospel. And it's one week before Easter season, Palm Sunday is next week. And I was thinking, what story from the Bible would lead into Easter? And there's one story that came to mind, and that is when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. What an amazing story, what a foreshadowing of the power of Jesus to conquer death, to, to raise someone else from the dead, to bring new life. So here it is from the Gospel of John. I'm going to read it from the actual Bible this week. Chapter 11. So it talks about Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. And we can meet them from earlier stories in the Bible where Jesus visited their house and it tells about how Mary sat at his feet and listened to him and Martha was busy preparing a meal, and they had a little discussion about that. Jesus must have been close friends to that family. We don't know too much about Lazarus, but we know that he got sick and that Mary and Martha called for Jesus to come because they believed that Jesus could help, that he could heal Lazarus from his deadly sickness. And the interesting thing is it says that Jesus delayed. He said, not yet. He waited two days before he came with his disciples to Lazarus. It says here, So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So right there he said, this, this sickness has a reason. This trouble, this adversity that Lazarus was experiencing has a reason. It has a reason. It'll bring the glory of God. And it's interesting that Jesus waited. Did he do that just because he wanted things to get more dramatic? Did he want Lazarus to die so that he could raise him from the dead? Or sometimes do we have to learn that we have to wait in our trouble, in our adversity, and still believe that Jesus will come and help us? Let's listen to the story as it continues. It says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. But then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. So they went, they had a little discussion about um, whether or not it was safe. And the disciples didn't really understand what Jesus was planning to do. He told them that Lazarus was asleep, but he was going there to wake him. And the disciples said, well, if he's sleeping, let him sleep. That's healthy, that'll, that'll help him get better. And then it's interesting, Jesus spoke it out clearly. He said this. He said, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let's go to him. So then Jesus and his disciples went to Bethany. And here it goes on. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. So four days since Lazarus died, he had been buried in a tomb. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. So put yourself in, in Martha and Mary's shoes. They had called for Jesus. They really had hoped that he had come, that he would come to heal their brother. They must have seen him perform many miracles and been with him when he healed sick people or cast out demons. And here their brother had died. Imagine how they were feeling. Maybe even a little bit upset at Jesus for not coming. Who knows? When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. You can think about that. Martha was the one that was always more active and busy, so she was the one that went to meet Jesus. And Mary, maybe Mary was even too dejected to come out. Who knows? But this, this conversation between Martha and Jesus is, is amazing. It's full of so much power and wisdom. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She had such faith. If you it told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But listen to this. She said, but I know that even now, even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Isn't that amazing faith that Martha had? She was disappointed, but she said, even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. She knew Jesus was Lord. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Wow, that is the heart of the gospel there. Jesus' message about being the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in Jesus will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. So Martha believed. Do we believe? Then the story goes on how Martha went and got her sister Mary, and Mary came and threw herself at the feet of Jesus. It says, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So almost the same words as Martha. They, almost a little bit of accusation. Jesus, you should have been here. If you would have been here, then our brother wouldn't have died. Now this is really an amazing part of the story. What Jesus' response to Mary here. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. That's a very moving passage. At one sentence, Jesus wept. Jesus had the full, he was fully man. He had the capacity for emotion, for heart. When he wept, he really wept out of grief. And what do you think he was grieved at? Was he grieved because Lazarus was dead? He knew that he was going to raise Lazarus. So it must have been deeper than that. He must have been weeping for Mary, for Martha, for the pain and suffering in their heart. He's weeping for us, for the pain, for the suffering, for the sin in our hearts. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. Now, if you know the, the context of this, of the customs of the Jewish people, it would have been very unusual for Jesus, a rabbi, to go to a tomb, to go to a grave. That was unclean. But Jesus went to the tomb. He wanted to see Lazarus. And he said, take away the stone. Imagine the shock if you would have been one of the bystanders or the family. And here it goes on. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. So that action of faith that the people had, the family of Martha and Mary, to obey Jesus, to roll away the stone to a tomb that someone was buried in. Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. That's a command of authority. I mean, Jesus could have said a lot of things there. He said, Lazarus, come out. A command to a dead man. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now the story doesn't tell us too much about what happened then. If you imagine the, the disbelief, the rejoicing, the, the victory over death that this man was back among the living, Lazarus. I wonder what kind of celebration they had. And Jesus did that to show the power that God, that He, Son of God, our Lord, the giver of life, has over death, has over sin, has over anything, any, any trouble we have. Let's not forget that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the answer. He can overcome anything. Let's have the faith like Martha and Mary 
to say to Jesus that you can help us now if it's God's will. So what a story to think about as we enter in these Easter days. We hear about and read about the suffering of Jesus, his death, and his resurrection. And let's take that power and that glory and let's believe that it can work in our lives, in your life. This is the hope of the gospel. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to Easter. Take care.